In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, the second Saturday of the Holy and Great Lent, you see, the, the time flies really fast. We just started it now. Two weeks already, already had passed. But let's focus to see the teaching that we will get from today's gospel. So as he was preaching, he withdrew himself. And no one knew where he was. See how easy, being in front of them, he just disappeared. And they were looking for him. Only this shows us his divinity, that he can be here and there and everywhere at any time he wants. And they were looking and only the apostles were able to found him, to find him because they were clean in heart so this is one of the requirements that he asked from us to be clean in heart in order to to see him to see and taste his grace he's not asking for much just to deny our ego, to humble ourselves, and to come and embrace Him. As I said many times, He just is waiting for that one step from our side, and He will do the 99, the rest of them for us. Just one. Just the desire, if we have the desire to embrace him, to follow him, he will do the rest for us. But even that is difficult for us because we are looking for our for the pleasure of our body, for the luxury of this life. We're not looking for the spiritual pleasure. We're not looking for the divine luxury which is repentance, which is prayer, which is confession, which is all the mysteries that he provides us through his divine church, that he gave his flesh for this church, even though that the church was corrupted and did not deserve it. But out of love, he still made this this sacrifice for the entire humanity and he became the head of this church and now because of that sacrifice we are able today to partake of his divine body and blood through this unique grace great grace that he provides to us through his church and when the apostles approached him they said everyone is looking for you and he said well let's go and preach in other towns because that's the reason I came I cannot be only in one place so see he cares about everyone not only about one group or one nation as the Jewish were thinking, thinking that it's, it's their God and that's it. And there are the chosen, the chosen uh, nation, the chosen people. No. Everyone is chosen. And everyone can partake of His grace if we desire to do so, if we want to do so. And that's another reason that the church established these Saturdays of the souls that we can pray for them, for the departed ones, those that once used to be with us, to share bread with us, to, 
to share love with us, to share care with us. And because God is love, and as the Holy Fathers are telling us through the prayers, that He does not want the death of a sinner, but He will turn back and live. So even though, if some are neglecting this time given to us to live accordingly, to live a Christian life, to live a life full of love. And they are departing in a dark statement of their life, even though through the church, through, through these memorials that we are making for them, He is giving them comfort. He is giving them a release. As St. Paisius was saying, the Koliva that we are making for the departed ones is the best lawyer for them. Imagine. The Koliva is a lawyer for the soul, for the departed ones. That's why it's important specifically to make the Koliva. The other gifts are, are good, but the most important is Koliva. Is the bread for the Holy Communion that we are making? Is the wine for the Holy Communion? Is the wine for the lambs? Is the pure biwax candle that we are lighting for, for their souls? Not, not the plastic one, the paraffin or whatever, the petroleum. But specifically the pure, the natural ones. The, those are helping them. It's like throwing a bucket of water on someone that is burning. This is what a candle means for a soul that is burning in hell. So it's important when we are entering the church to light both for living and the dead, but mostly is better for the departed one because they cannot pray anymore for them any longer they are not able to do that but we have the ability to help them to intercede for them and if they are in a lighter place then they are rejoicing and th and they are praying for us in front of God and imagine our relatives if we have relatives in paradise they are proud Look, our children, or our grand or great great grandchildren. Children. This is our generation. This is our seed. They are rejoicing. They are happy that they are they are a part of you. But if we are not doing our job, they are sorry, blaming themselves. See, we did not do the right thing because. The same thing. We didn't teach them rightly. So, knowing all these things, my dear ones, we have to do our part and also to teach our children to do their part. Because this is the connection, generation to generation. How do we have the Holy Bible today? They did not know how to write back then but it was transmitted word by word from father to their son, right? So cannot we do the same thing? No, because we have other responsibilities. It's easier to go to, to, play, to places, parks, amusement park, and movies and uh, beaches and whatever uh, other things, and to spend time there then to spend time teaching our kids the word of God the prayer the love and many other virtues that are leading us towards God 
but we have time for everything else. And at the, at the end, you know, when we are facing difficulties, problems, family problems, a lot of problems in, in the society, illnesses, war, and stuff, we are asking and we are questioning why these things are happening, why God allows these things to happen because of us. Because of our ungratefulness, because of our laziness, because of our indifference, all these things are the result of our unfaithfulness, our lack of faith. This is the result of all of this. Geron de Sa Lambrini, one of our modern nuns, that she is considered to be a saint, she was telling a story about uh, a young girl that she passed away about seven years old. And uh, like the night before of her 40th day, she appeared to her while, while she was praying. And she asked her, why are you here in this world? You should be there. And she said, well, I came to you to tell you two things that is making my entrance in heaven one because of me and one is because of my parents and she said what is this so before I passed away the few day, last few days that I went to school I forgot my pencil and uh, my notebook and one of uh, my classmates she gave me a new pencil a new uh, notebook and because of that I didn't return it that's, that's making my interest difficult. What was the second? The second one is, I didn't close the 40 days to, to move to the next step, and my mother is already pregnant. This, this is making it very difficult. They should abstain at least these uh, 40 days, and they wanted to replace me with another girl but they are wrong, it's going to be a boy, not a girl. And you cannot replace anyone. They had to pray and to respect God's choice for me. And I want to be happy and I want them to be happy. But they, they, did the, they made a wrong decision by doing that. So you see how important it is for us to pray. Because we are thinking humanly. We are thinking earthly. We want to comfort our body, but we are not taking care of the soul. We're not thinking of the eternity. We are thinking what is here, what we can see, what we can touch, what we can taste, and that's it. But there are things much more further than that, which are more important than that and are eternal. Only the thing, the word eternal shall make us think about this. Eternal. Not one, not three years, not ten years, not even a hundred, not even a thousand or ten thousand. It's eternity. Do we understand that? What that means? So shouldn't that word make us think? Emphasize on, on this word and think what I'm going to do in eternity. So let us work on our salvation, my dear ones. And let us pray for those that are departed. Every single liturgy. When we are coming to the church, always we shall give the names, both of living and the dead, to the altar. Every single time. And when at the end, when the priest is preparing the Holy Anaphora, the Holy Communion, 
at the end he puts all those names that he had commemorated before during the preparation every single name that comes there is commemorated and the priest takes a parcel a small parcel for each name that is given to the holy altar and especially when we are putting the names for the dead for the departed ones we are asking god to wash away their sins with his blood and we're putting them in the chalice do we understand how important is this so every single liturgy makes a difference for for a soul as you will be in front of the judge and when the the lawyer the accuser accuser comes and oh but he did this and this and this but the lawyer comes and but yes but he did this so it makes makes it easy right so the same thing every single prayer every single liturgy that we are making for them we are celebrating commemorating them helps them so that's why praying daily for them at home every single liturgy to give the names to commemorate them it's important because in this way we are helping ourselves and we are helping them so it's win-win we're not losing anything so let us help each other let us care for each other let us pray for each other let us embrace each other that with one wo voice we may confess the father and the son and the holy spirit amen god bless you all Thank you.